objects can contain other objects. Also, arrays are objects. You can think of it like a car engine or pretty much any object, even your computer is made up of many, many objects. When we look at these objects, we see one entire object. We see the overall hierarchy, but you can dig down deeper and deeper. Just like a mechanic takes a car engine to pieces. You have the car object, you have the engine, and the engine has many objects inside of it, including the head gasket, pistons and all the rest of the rods, nooks and crannies that go in there. And then the steering wheel, the interior, the seats, the headrests, all the rest of it is all based on objects. And when we group these objects together in a giant hierarchy, we have one object, but we understand that objects contain objects. And that's how it works in programming as well. So here we're going to start out with the myapp.js file and I'm first of all going to create a symbol, a memory pointer, and we're going to create a car memory pointer and we're going to assign the object. So whenever we reference car, this will pull up this object in memory. And then we want the make of the car, for example, we'll say Volvo and then we have the speed, 116 miles an hour, so that's very quick. But then also what I'd like to do is I'd like to put an engine into my car. So let's go ahead and create an engine object. Now again, I'm using the colon for assignment and then all I do is I put in another object. And this object is still going to help describe this object. If I know an object contains an engine, for example, I know that it's going to drive the car. It's going to have some kind of movement. So this is actually still called a property. This key and value pair, as we have key and value pairs right here, this is still called a property. So even if you have an object, which is a standard object or an array object, it doesn't matter. It is still classed as a property. So we are creating a property here, the engine property. And inside of here, we can have, let's say the size of the engine, which is gonna be a two liter. There's a floating point number for you. And then also we can say make, and the make can actually be from another manufacturer such as BMW and so forth and also we can have the fuel type as well the fuel type could let's say be petrol so there we go and we can keep going with this for example I could have pistons as well and again they can be an array for example and we can have an array of piston one like so and piston two now don't forget arrays are objects. We must remember this. So I could make this another standard object or I am instead making this an array because we have an array of pistons. We have many pistons and typically every piston is the same. So what I could do is as an array is a type of object, don't forget it is an object type, I can actually embed objects into the array. So for example, we can have an object for each piston. Now, a car doesn't typically come with two pistons, but this one does. So we have the pistons, we have an array of pistons, and each piston is an object, like so. So objects can contain objects, arrays contain objects, and objects can contain arrays. They're just classed as objects, really, to the programming language. So now we have a list of all the pistons because they all carry the same similar type of thing. And so each piston can, let's say, just have the maker. We can have the maker and we can set that to BMW. And you can go into even more detail by embedding more objects into this object and arrays and so forth. You can just keep on going embedding objects inside of objects and you can see there is a hierarchy. A hierarchy means a structure, just like the food chain is a hierarchy or your place of work has a hierarchy with the boss sitting at the top and then it goes down to directors and other things like that. So that is a hierarchy. We have a structure in which our object is created. So we have the main car object with these properties. Then we have the engine that's embedded inside of it. This is another property, but it's an object embedded inside of this. So there we go, we've embedded that. And then we have the size of the engine, the make, the fuel and so forth. And then finally we have another object, which is the array and the array has multiple piston objects inside of it. So that really is the whole hierarchy for our car object. Now, if I go ahead and save this, 
and I open it up inside of the browser. Let's go ahead and type in car. There is my car object. So we referenced it in memory and you can see in the make and the speed, but then you can also see engine is an object and I can expand that and you'll be able to see we have the fuel and make and then also we have pistons. Now pistons is an array and it tells us how many elements are contained within the array. This is really nice. You can see here we have two elements, two objects. There's the first and then there's the second and don't forget to separate out each value with the comma. And there it is, I have an array and I have two objects. So we have the first object with the index of zero. Don't forget it's zero index. So this is the zero indexed object. And again, this could be a string or it could be a number. It could be anything you really wanted it to be. And there we go. So we have an object, maker BMW. And then we also have the second piston object, which is exactly the same. Let's change that to BMW2, in fact, so we can see a bit of a difference here. So car, open this up, go to the engine, go to the pistons. And the second object with the index of one is maker BMW2. And now the first one is maker BMW. So now we have an entire hierarchy, a structure and a stack. And also I can create an array. And again, I'm going to create a memory pointer to my array. And an array can contain a variety of things such as a string or a number, or in fact, it could contain another array. So I can have another array and I can say embed and I can say 200. I can also come out of that. So there's the string, there's the number, there is the embedded array, an array inside of an array. We have embed 200. And if I stack this down a little bit like so, you'll be able to see each value on a new line. And I can also embed an object inside of here as well. So I can say car is gonna be Ford. There is an object, and again, I can embed objects inside of objects. Arrays can embed objects, and objects can embed arrays. These are all properties, by the way. If it's not a function as the value, it's classed as a property. And here's something really cool, is the fact that we have methods in objects. So I can create a function or a method called drive and it returns the string drive. So that is a method within our car object directly. You could put this inside of the engine object and even what you could do is take this function right here and you can place it inside of an array. So you can place functions inside of an array. Now what's important to note here is you don't have a name. These are called methods because methods have a key name that we can define in a standard object. And then we have the subroutine that will perform that particular action. In an array, we don't have that anymore. We cannot define a name for our function in the same way. It's given a number. So let's take a look at this now. Let's take a look at the array. So if I go ahead and refresh, in car, you can now see that we have drive and by the parentheses, we can see that it is in fact a method, a subroutine waiting to be executed. And then also you have array. Now with array, we have zero. The first element is the string. 100 is the second element with the index of one. Two is an array with two elements which is embed and 200, and you can see that there, it has two elements, zero embed, one 200. Then also you have the object as well. The object that I've embedded has one property called car and the value Ford, and there it is. Then finally, we also have the fourth element. Now you'll notice the fourth one is in fact a function. And there is my function. This is the drive function, but I can't give it a distinct name. The memory pointer is actually the number four this time, not as in the standard object, which the memory pointer was drive. So that's it. We've established that objects can contain other objects. Objects can contain the array type object and the array type object can contain objects 
and other array objects as well. You can just keep embedding objects and arrays inside one another, vice versa, it doesn't matter what order you do it in. You can keep on embedding and embedding. So go ahead and take a look at playing and experimenting and try to do this yourself. Try to make this hierarchy yourself, write it from scratch and really learn how the syntax flows and how things can be embedded inside of other things. Try to do it for your computer or for let's say other components or other objects that you work with in your house. Try to make an object hierarchy, whether it be a cabinet with drawers and so forth. Let's try to really learn this hierarchy and the syntax that goes behind it.